This is a final story, not of a mother, but of a sister. I told you that Ibn Hajar married two uns when he was 25 and she was 18. And he educated her and he taught her. Okay, who taught Ibn Hajar? I know she but in the household, who taught him? Ibn Hajar's father died when Ibn Hajar was only four years old. His elder sister, Sitt rakb this is the name, Sitt rakb she was only seven. There was a male guardian that took care of Sitt rakb but Sitt rakb was already a respectable girl. You know why? Because her father, the father of Ibn Hajar, when she was four, five, he used to take her with him to the mosque. And he used to make her sit with him in the study circles. She's four. She's, she has a lollipop. She's crying. She doesn't understand fiqh, but she is sitting. Tomorrow she will understand. Tomorrow she will appreciate. And indeed she did. That when the father died, she was only seven, but she was mature and she was respectable. What did she do? The first thing she did was that she retained the library of her father. Her father had a massive library. And it is that library that Ibn Hajar relied upon to accumulate knowledge in Islam. Imagine if the Daughter went to water stones and sold all these books secondhand. Or imagine if she used them in the winter to light some fire to keep herself warm. Or imagine if she just donated them to a charity shop or to the mosque. Imagine she just got rid of the books because they are not cookery books. Imagine, imagine, imagine she retained the entire library. Now, there is something unique, by the way, in that. This is not normal. Because back then, books used to be written by hand. So books were expensive. And when you sell books, you become wealthy. So if you had 10,000 books and you sold them, you could become... I'm not talking about a pamphlet, paperback, penguin book for two ninety nine. I'm talking about proper volumes of hadith and fiqh and tafsir. So don't underestimate and don't take lightly the fact that she decided not to sell the book. Also, I am aware of a great scholar called Ibn al-Jawzi, not Ibn al-Qayyim al jawziyyah another scholar who was called Ibn al-Jawzi. Ibn al-Jawzi was a fascinating speaker. His audience are not in 80 or 90. His audience are in thousands on a daily basis. And of course, at that time, there were no microphones. And when al-Jawzi speaks, someone, after 1,000, he will repeat the lecture. And after 1,000, another, he will repeat the lecture. So that at the end, someone will listen to the lecture. Not by the voice of Ibn al-Jawzi, but by the voice of the third and fourth speaker. A fascinating scholar, prolific writer. He wrote books on everything. In fact, he wrote a, a book called Akhbar al-Nisa. Stories of women or news about women. And all sorts of jokes. And, you know, you laugh at uh, many of the you know, mad stories that you hear about women and stuff like this. But this is not our topic because a lot of you will be offended. So, prolific writer. But the point I'm trying to make was that his son was corrupt. So he can give lectures and make you cry. But his son was corrupt. When he died, when Ibn al jawzi died, his son, you know what he did? He went and sold all the books that he wrote. All the books that his father wrote, he went and sold them. Ibn al jawzi had a massive library at home. He went and sold it all, 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 all. His father, at, not when he died, he was taken to prison, the father. So the father came after three years, went into his house like the father of Rabia, entered into the house. I thought, I thought, there was a library here. And th there was no library. Okay? And he went to his son, what did you do? He said, I sold all your books. I want you to appreciate what the, what the daughter of this great father of Ibn Hajar did. She retained the book. She didn't sell the books. Okay, this is with regards to the books. But the 
daughter wasn't only a book collector. She didn't have just the hobby for collection. No, she was a serious reader, a well-read. She doesn't read pamphlets. She reads books. And she traveled and met the greatest scholars of her time. She traveled to Mecca. She traveled to Medina. She traveled to Damascus. She traveled to Tunisia. She traveled to Egypt. All that when she was a teenager. All that when she was in her 20s. She got married when she was young. She had five daughters. All of them died. Various illnesses. Her husband died. She died at the age of 28. She died very young. When she died, the society cried, the elites, the scholars, the students, she had students. Okay, but what's the point? The point is that Ibn Hajar makes this fascinating confession. He says, Hiya ummi ba'da ummi. She was my mother too. To me, she was my second mother. He didn't say she was my eldest sister. She was my second mother. In fact, literally in Arabic, هي أمي بعد أمي. She was my mother after my mother. And then he says, كانت رفيقة بي. She used to be soft and tender. Of course, he's talking about her when she's dead now. So he is remembering. He says, كانت رفيقة بي. She used to love me, kiss me, hug me. انتفعت بآدابها مع صغر سني. I learned a lot from her despite the fact that she was extremely young. Now, I'm not saying this. I, I'm not the one who's saying this. You are not the one who's saying this. The one who's saying this is a great scholar. So he knows what he's talking about. And he knows when to say and give credit for those who taught him because he knows whether it's worthy to give credit to them or not. <laughs>